Hey there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we talked about voting districts, redistricting, and gerrymandering. And today we're going to be looking at different forms of government with Unit 4, Topic 7. We'll be talking about unitary states and federal states. Now, this video is all about how power is distributed through the government. And by understanding the distribution of power, we understand how society is run. We can see that some states concentrate their power at the national level, while other states decide to share that power with the national government and also regional government. States that have the power power concentrated at the national level are unitary states. Here, the regional governments have little to no power. The national government is what's going to set the laws and the policies and the systems for society. This is a great system for nation states or states that have a smaller population. Communication is key here and states that have more of a homogenous population and are less culturally diverse and also have a strong sense of national unity are more likely to succeed. Decisions can be quickly made at the national level and then applied throughout the state. However, one risk of having a unitary system is that the regional needs of the people are not listened to and minority groups are not always represented. Sometimes, too, these states can promote dominant cultural groups and enforce their ideas on the rest of the population. Now, while unitary states focus all their power on the national level, we can also see states that have decided to share that power between the regional governments and the national government. These states are known as federal states, and here power is shared between the national government and regional government. And there are some powers that overlap. States that often use a federal system are often ones that are multinational, or states that have a larger population, or a population that stretches over a large geographic area. The benefit of having a federal state is that decisions can be made at the local level. Regional governments are allowed to pass laws and policies that reflect the day-to-day -day needs of the people living in their region. This is great for states that are culturally diverse, geographically large, or have isolated territories. It allows people across the state to get their needs met, but still be part of that larger state and have a national identity. This also allows, too, minority groups to have more representation in their own regional governments and to be able to have their needs taken care of as well. Now, the downside to federal states is there's more inefficiencies. We now have different levels of government that have a say on different laws and policies. Some of these actually overlap with the national and the regional governments, which could lead to debates and this back and forth over who actually has the power. We also see that large-scale issues take more time to address as now there's more people involved in the decision process. And these states are also more prone to experience devolution. There you have it, geographers. That was a quick topic review video for 4.7, the different forms of governance. Now, don't forget to review the concepts that we just talked about, answer the questions on the screen, check your answers in the comments below. And if you're struggling with AP Human Geography, consider checking out my Ultimate Review Packet. It's a great resource that covers all the different units of this class. All right, thanks so much for watching geographers i'm mr sin don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you get notified when i post new videos and until next time i'll see you online